know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. Most cities of India have old historic precincts around which they developed. The modern city of Mumbai has many. To the south, there is the old fort area where the British dropped their anchor. And to the north, the older areas that constituted the ancient Buddhist viharas and cave temples. But like all urban centres, year two, heritage is under threat. Decades of neglect, apathy and the greed for prime real estate are taking their toll. Vikas Dilavri is one of the city's foremost conservation architects. A man who has also been called the city's monuments man. He has been awarded 17 Asia Pacific Awards for Conservation by UNESCO during his 30 year career. Conservation was not an established discipline as what you have now. We were happy if we got a facade to do, if we got something to demonstrate. And we were all trying to set high benchmarks. This was the time when uh, economic liberalization was happening. A lot of multinationals were coming to Mumbai and they chose to be located in South Mumbai. And uh, they were sensitive enough that they didn't want just the interiors to be done. They wanted the building uh, facades and exteriors to be done too. So the earliest break which I got was a merchant mansion uh, which is uh, on Madame Kama Road. That was 1995. Then it was followed by an American Express Bank uh, and uh, that was a turning point because the banks for the first time started becoming patterns of conservation. Then one bank followed with the next bank, then came the ANZ Greenlays which is now the standard chartered bank on uh, MG Road. To talk about uh, one building which I like the most, I think the Army Navy building and the Rajabai Tower set very high benchmarks and later on the focus shifted to restoring it authentically right where you were dealing with the interiors, where you were dealing with the, the building. So Corporation Hall and Bhavdaji Lad Museum comes in. And then later on, it's very interesting that I start then working on buildings which are not significant buildings of Mumbai. These are the buildings for the poor Parsis or the Garib Zarostian Renthan Fund properties. And then after that, there has been no looking backwards because uh, people have started uh, acknowledging conservation. Uh, I had uh, many organizations like YWCA, YMCA, uh, churches uh, like Taylor Methodist and other people who got in touch with you to restore their buildings. And then eventually uh, it came uh, to larger projects like the railways getting interested. And uh, again, Intact Mumbai chapter was involved to do the nomination of uh, CST in 2003 as a World Heritage Site, which we did and we were successfully got the nomination. And that was a very proud moment, uh, CSMT uh, became the first non-ASI building that way to be uh, declared as a World Heritage Site. Conservation and restoration isn't easy. It costs money and needs the buy-in from multiple stakeholders. The toughest job Vikas says is getting the basic buy-in for the need for conservation. One major challenge would be to get a client who understands conservation. If you don't get one, then you know, you're on the path of compromises. The, having got projects, the second most difficult task is to get craftsmen and to get materials. Uh, that's not easily available and uh, you just have one or two contractors who came to who seems to be doing everything and that's not really the purpose of conservation because conservation should up, uplift the entire uh, craftsmen's uh, the guild uh, and uh, you know the trade but unfortunately that doesn't happen uh, the third uh, most important thing is that in conservation we are taught to do minimum intervention but most conservation, uh, you know, most of the contractors and professionals sometimes get carried away to do maximum intervention. So, you know, you have to force and control yourself to do the minimum intervention, what is desirable. And uh, the other things which are there are more dealing with government projects where L1 or the lowest tender gets the project. Now, that's not a desirable thing to happen uh, when you really see it in a conservation uh, point of view. The plus points of conservation is that it doesn't load the infrastructure, it retains the 
uh, it's is the most sustainable uh, method of uh, you know sustainable architecture where you're not uh, yeah, uh, the carbon footprints are being retained you're not demolishing anything so you're doing minimum construction and you're retaining maximum of material energy and things like that the most satisfying things are when you transform something and uh, you know i've done the bare minimum because hats off to the original architect who's first designed it i've just done very superficially coming back to the uh, to the original person's idea and creation but it's so interesting to see how these spaces how these places have worked simple example is all the fountains if you see the water flowing from the fountain it gives such a positive uh, sense to both the citizens to the tourists it sets a high standard that the cities are being looked after well and all all this was all existing unfortunately you know it's now that we were given an opportunity so you managed to restore three fountains the question is where if you see these fountains they have been always existing but unfortunately they were painted in wrong colors then they became traffic islands and then a lot of vegetation a lot of uh, growth and they you know some of these were not very looked after and they are located right in the roundabouts of the city and it was amazing how the mumbai municipal corporation in uh, you know sometimes with pu public private partnership with either kala goda or with uh, you know mahindras decided to restore these fountains and in case of uh, flora fountain M mcgm decided to do it themselves and just see how the transformation has come this area is no longer used just to cross the road but it is a gathering space people meet in the evening they admire the fountain people take selfies they click photographs and that's that's where as i said to you we have that potential if you restore things to its uh, minutest detail this city is a fabulous city and uh, these places will make the city great conservation can change the face of a city and reclaim important public spaces something conservationists like vikas are painstakingly helping to do building by building